It's the third Saturday of the month, which means we are back here for TVGP's Game Club. This time we're talking about the return of the Obra Dinn. Uh, let's talk about our platforms as I introduce everybody. I'm your host, Boston, and playing on the Switch. Uh, joining me, as always, is Moonpeer. Hi there, Xbox One X. And Musum. Actually, I meant to buy it on the Switch, and then I bought it on the PS4. So... There you go. Okay, so we've got <laughs> everybody's everybody's switching around. Uh, <clears throat> all right, let's get all the details of the game out of the way. First, released on October 18th, 2018, published by 3909, developed by Lucas Pope. If you remember, recognize that name, that's the guy who made <clears throat> Papers, Please. Uh, platforms PC, OS X, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. Time travel here, Metacritic 89, Open Critic 90. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, the upper limits of what we've seen here on uh, of Game Club. Uh, appears for the release date, the release month of this game, Forza Horizon 4, uh, which is a, an incredibly fantastic video game. Uh, Mega Man 11, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which everyone should go play. Starlink Battle for Atlas, Soul Calibur 4, and Red Dead Redemption 2. And <laughs> just a killer month. Um, a question we ask every month is, was Return of the Oberdin top of the pile, middle of the pack, or overlooked everyone at the same time? Top yeah. of the pile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the game itself, uh, real quick uh, warning here. I typically don't do this. This one's going to be really spoiler-filled, uh, just because of what the game is. Um, yes. If you're interested in this game, just take a pause here and spend like the six hours to go play it and then come back. Uh, uh -huh. The less you know about this going in, the better. Um, so just just go play it. it. It will be well worth your while. Um, yeah. I'm going to guess we all kind of came out of this pretty positively. So yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, if you haven't, stop pause do right. whatever go play the game and then come I back. Really, go solve the mystery i really hate grand statements so understand I, I genuinely mean this i think this is one of the most original games i've ever played so yes uh -huh. i yep. i think it's worth your time yeah okay so if you're still here with us let's talk about Oberdin, what we liked what we didn't like um i sort of struggled to find anything i didn't like in this game which I is kind of the first this one okay great uh i don't like the color options like the screen and the color options like i get it it's an ode back to old school consoles and stuff crts like that. yep yeah, yeah they're all i like the i like that each of the color options are a different type of computer crts from like the 80s and the 90s um mm -hmm. And I, I like that there's an LCD option in there, but I f feel like there should have been one more option for not something a little more plain, but maybe something a little bit more readable for people that are sort yeah. of struggling with like the depth of it. Crisp would be my chosen word for that, like because it was. I have a 4K HDR TV. Yeah. I had to stick it on the sharp setting and I had to stick it on like one of the good, the whites, but wasn't fully white mm. because I have my TV on dark with HDR to a minimum. It's still amazing and beautiful, but if I have very bright lights, like if I turn my backlight up on my TV, television, which increases the value of HDR in games such as Forza Horizon and so on and so forth. <laughs> sure. If I do that, I can play games for about 10 minutes and then I get a, a like skull-splitting migraine. <clears throat> oh, so I right. have to have everything on lower contrast settings. And it pierced my eyes so much when I first started <laughs> playing this game. I mean, I mean that's the, the downside of, of having <clears throat> sort of an ambitious art style. Uh, you know, uh -huh. you, you, it reminded me a lot of Mad World on the Wii, um, where it's sort of like, this is something that a lot of people don't do, and I feel like it, it's a risk, and I think f for some people it, it runs the risk of not paying off. I suspect it was yeah. done for a pragmatic reason. 
because I, I don't... Because it's a small studio. Well, that, and I didn't look up the rating of the game, but I bet they were also trying to avoid a mature rating. And Oh, sure. The yes, amount of gore in that game, point. having real colors in it, I think would have... It would have been mature. Yeah, because it's essentially two colors. It is black, and it is whatever color you've chosen. I, I stuck with the, the default that kind of like... Not grayscale, but like almost Game Boy kind of yellowish, uh, mm-hmm. whatever whatever that default color was. Uh, hilariously, the sharp graphics option on the Switch uh, shrinks the screen so that the game only takes up about a quarter of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like an old PC game like Doom where you're hitting the minus button so it shrinks the screen until you can until it runs fast enough it's just like all right this is That's funny. unusable but it's kind of funny sure all right but I only uh, played in it, handheld mode I I never played in uh, on a TV It looks like this actually might have been an M uh, hmm, was it okay. interesting I'm probably avoided a triple X <laughs> right Right. So my only real problems with the game, and I, I wouldn't say they were problems, they were just um, whenever someone makes one of these again, you know, probably not Lucas Pope, probably someone else, but like, I like this mm-hmm. game style enough, people should, um, is I could not for the life of me remember the button schemes. Like anytime I wanted yes. to exit the map or go back to a page or any of that, it was just completely forgotten. And that may have been because this is such an original concept for a game that just the language of the tools uh-huh. didn't fully gel with me. Um, but I thought that was just a problem with me because I'm playing on the Switch and all the buttons are like mm. twisted 90 degrees. So it's like, oh, right, I'm X and Y. Oh, okay. The amount of I, times I exited out of the map. Yeah. The amount of times I meant to close the book and instead flip back to the previous page i was on was <laughs> right almost 100 percent, which is a cool feature but it's sort of like yeah. all right now i have to hit b to get back to the previous page and yeah so that's a uh, three for three on the navigating the book was a problem <laughs> okay uh, like 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 musim said not the largest problem in the world it's just one of those things where it's like throughout i it this took me six and a half hours to 100 percent it the entire time even like in the epilogue, I'm still screwing up the buttons. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So now that we've pretty much done that, <laughs> we've talked about the negative. Yeah. Shall we talk about how, like Musum said at the, at the start, like this is a very original concept for a game, mm-hmm. not an original concept for an idea, because this is the type of stuff I used to love doing when I was a kid. Oh, these yeah. lateral thinking puzzle things where, like Sudoku, here is a piece of information. Mm-hmm. Put all the pieces of information you have into sp- into the correct spaces to fill out and get the correct answer for these other things that you have. Like This is not a new concept generally in the way of the world. It, it reminds me of those logic puzzles I always played as a kid where it's like, there are 10 racers in this race and this... John has a red headband, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. So I just, in this grid, I fill in John and red, all right, and then I can cross out all the other ones. Like, mm-hmm. It very much like, feels like that. It's a logic puzzle, but it's a logic puzzle brought to life in such a yep. way that you've never really seen it done before. We we were talking about um, audiobooks before the show, before we started recording this, um, and specifically audiobooks that have like a full cast and sound effects and stuff. That's really what Obra Dinn reminded me of, because I didn't, number one, I went into this game knowing so little other than everybody loves it. So I didn't expect there to be voice acting, which mm-hmm. in hindsight is sort of funny. Um, and also necessary. Yeah, and I didn't expect there to be so much sound design. Like, the Oberdin herself is quiet when you're walking around as the investigator lady, like in the modern day uh-huh. stuff. Um, but when you're in, like when it has that black screen, and when you dive into one of the, the corpses, like the, the sound design there was so incredible where I'm like listening, I have my headphones in, and I'm like listening to stuff in the background where it's like, oh, is this, what, what do I hear in the background? What, what do I hear creaking and sort of breaking apart back there? Like really, oh. really incredibly designed. My favorite one of those is the Doom Chapter 1 where the artist uh, gets oh. it because he is in the process of having diarrhea right off the front of the ship. 
Yeah. The first thing you hear when you go in is like, <laughs> yeah. It's just like, okay. And I sorry, Musa, I totally jumped over you yeah. right then. Yeah. I I was just gonna tag onto the sound design thing. It it really bothers me that Lucas Pope did this entire game himself because he's so freaking good at like seemingly yeah. every level of it, like the audio cues when you go to a new memory or the audio cues versus when you don't go to a new memory or uh, the audio cues after you get three lined up that just immediate black screen with the doom yeah doom doom like that that is probably one of my favorite audio stingers in video game history is just like when you get that third match and it just right to black screen and it's like doom 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 and it it goes through your book and it's so satisfying and then when it gets to that last page it plays that little jingle where like the last three notes is mark 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 in the book like every time was so satisfying yeah um my favorite one was the watch um when you go into a new memory and there's just the spiral blackness mm -hmm. into the watch if you hit a you cancel that and it does it like really quick in reverse and the watch start, it spins backwards and then closes oh i had no idea that's super cool uh -huh. man yeah i i i think i sort of fell in love with this game in the first memory where, like, the captain is like, I'll give you exactly what you deserve, and that's just that gunshot, and the gunshot happens as soon as the, the picture comes back, yeah. and you're just, like, the first thing you do, of course, is you just step to the side, and seeing these dioramas in, if frozen in time, was never, and, like, they just kept getting better, like, the first time you see the Kraken... Ooh. Where you're yeah. just like, what is all this noise? Like, what is breaking wood apart? And then just seeing this giant crack and like engulfing the ship completely is just like, oh, this game is so good. And like, <laughs> when you see the crack, and if you're like me, you're like, man, that's crazy. So this crack and murdered everyone. I need to figure that. And it's like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, the crack did it. Of course, it's like, oh no, there's that's chapter four. Okay, this is mm -hmm. real bad. There's way more. And I love going to like. There's spider people. There's mermaids. <laughs> there's <laughs> yeah. I, one of my favorite ones is like once you get all the memories. One of my favorite ones is like I think it's like chapter eight or nine is the one where it's like. One person murdered the other one. Another person rushed in and murdered them. The person behind them murdered them. It's just like four people get murdered, uh, like rapid fire. It's just like, this is, oh. how the hell am I going to figure this out? This guy doesn't even have a face anymore. It just got blasted off by a shotgun. Like, what am I going to do here? Yeah. I, you know, one of the most elated moments I had in this game. Like, so I guess to back up. Um, So... I played this with my wife, uh, so it was both of us trying to solve puzzles, which was a lot of fun, except uh, when we... I wanted to play this with my wife, but it was too violent for my kid, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing we just... Uh, I wanted to do the same thing, and my wife said, no, I want to play that by myself, so no spoilers, right. please. Fair enough. Well, just FYI, you will discover troubles in your marriage as both of you want to follow <laughs> different thought trails at the same time. Um, right, it's like, well, of course it has to be this guy. He was acting shady in the background of the other one. Like, <laughs> you will both get epiphanies and hunches at the same time that lead you in opposite directions. It was still a lot of fun to do, uh, but... Oh, I bet. The, My wife and I played The Witness together, and it was very much that. We're just like, mm. all right, you have figured this whole thing out. I'm going to let you take care of this whole thing. Uh, I think it would have followed a similar sort of yeah. path. Man, I forgot the original thing I was going to say, bringing that. Oh, right. Uh, my favorite, Sorry. one of the most <laughs> elated moments in the video game was, uh, you know, like at some point you're wondering, you see a guy sleeping in a bunk and his arm is slouched over the side and you see a tattoo I of him. I don't know exactly who you're going to And then say. you are just searching for this tattoo on someone in one of these memories and it's not showing up. And finally it was just... Some memory we just rarely gone to. I can't remember if it was one of the random bones you find around the ship, or if it was a memory within one. But yeah, it was the one before the three people escaped to to Africa. Yes, and he has like yeah. his arm out. I I had I had he, done the he's, reverse he's where his I arms out because he's stabbing the guy who's trying to get onto the ship to join on with the other people. Mm. Yeah, and like I did the reverse where I saw his arm out and there was a tattoo, and I was like, 
All right, back to this one where the guy dies during the poker game. I gotta, I gotta go find out where this dude is. Find out what his number tag is on his hammock. Yeah, yeah, man. I that that was. Th- there's so many of those moments in this game where it's just like, wait a minute. I, I feel like I've seen this guy before. Like I feel like I've seen something that's gonna lead me to one of my one of the the ones that really got me was um. Seeing the guy with the turban, who has that, like, scimitar, I had seen it ha- hanging next to his hammock. And, like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, God, now I can figure out who that guy is. And, like, y- you see this one clue where it's sort of everything starts coming together. And it's yeah. it, it, 100% satisfying each and every time. Yeah. And there's, like, the scimitar thing, we didn't even notice. We guessed that guy before that and found it later. And we're like, oh, that could have told us that, too. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh-huh. The same with me in the pipe for whatever guy was. Oh, it was yeah. like, oh, yep. it just his pipe is in the bag next to. It. Oh, all right, that would have been way easier. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the guys on the three boats with the chest. Yes, because Boy, he literally gets stabbed with one of the giant spear things, and the pipe. He's got the pipe in his mouth, and the next scene, it's flying through the air. Yeah, God, what a what a great scene where it's just like, oh, I'm I'm diving into this person, and there's just like this chain. Where you're it, one of the few where you're seeing it in order, where you're you, you're seeing the whole thing sort of fall apart. Mm-hmm. So, did you guys yeah. think the guy covered in the circle tattoos was the French guy for the majority of the game, like us? Oh no, I, okay. I struggled with him a lot. It took a long time for me mm-hmm. to number one figure out who he was, but then number two specifically figure out that the top men were all in one scene together pretty yeah. much and i could figure out them all from there and it's just like well i'm just an idiot aren't i <laughs> I, I feel like there's so many of those that <gasps> I, I think it's really interesting that it sounds like uh, between the three of us we've had different pathways to figuring out the solution on a bunch of these which i think is there isn't just one solution for each one of them there's so many like the t- number of times I used the clothes that people are wearing <laughs> to figure out their rank, where it's like, oh, they're wearing this specific one, so I know that they're all mates to, like, the first, second, third, and fourth crewmen. So it's like, all right, I can at least say that they are of this rank. Yeah. So then it, yeah. it narrows them down at least a little bit. Um, it I think that's really – I think that really speaks to the design of this game, that it's – there's this spider web of information that you're sort of consciously and subconsciously ingesting the whole game and kind of putting it together as it goes. And I got a ton of stuff just via process of elimination. Like oh, the yeah. amount of yeah. guesses I made that I had no story or any other information to go on. I was just saying, well, this person was here. They're obviously working this job. They have to be one of these right. three people because these other people are from China, um, you know. Yeah, exactly. Is that the Russians you're talking about by any chance? Because I hated those <laughs> Russians so much. Yeah. I don't know that I specif- uh I don't. I don't think I was talking about anything specifically. I was just trying to create an example. But the Russians, we got oh, one but... of them like real early on, and mm-hmm. the other two just yep. took forever and a day to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. For me, it was them and the midshipmen, mm. the three young boys specifically, yeah. who were all around the cow. I got one of them because he's referenced in that cow. Uh, yeah, they like memory. say you'd never been on a farm, Charlie, or something like that. That's exactly and then I, what they say, you giant nerd. And then I didn't. Re- no, well, I kept rereading it because I was like, oh yeah, it's this Charles guy. Not looking through the full roster, realizing there are two Charles, and I had it wrong mm-hmm. the entire game. And if I just switched to the other one, would have knocked that guy out way earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, anytime yeah. I heard someone's name, we'd go through the list and be like, okay, there are two Johns. Let's try them both. Okay, some still up. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. Then you get down. Oh, to... You killed my brother. I killed your best friend. Yeah. You know, that brother uh, one, like I... all the way at the end, was so good. It's like, oh, now I can figure out the guy from like the very first page. I just got to figure out which one is which with the same last name. Mm-hmm. You see, and that was one we did just by trying them both. We're like, we know it has right. to be one of these. Was it Peter? I feel like it was a Peter. Yes. Uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, and, like, you know how they died, so that's... You sort of have most of the info. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh... 
Man, this is I, going into this game. Like, so usually when there's a game is critically acclaimed as this, and like I look up a couple pictures, I'm like, eh, that looks fine. Like, usually I'm going into it thinking this is going to suck. I'm not going to like this as much as everyone else. <laughs> just going to make everyone right. mad. And I adore this game. 2020 in human form, everybody. <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'd liked Papers, Please, and I I didn't really know what to expect. And I think the thing that I liked so much about this game and the, one of the reasons why it was sort of like the, the perfect game at the perfect time is there's no timer. There's no pressure. Like once you see the memory, the, the first time you see the memory, of course, it, it fades out because you, you have to fill in the book and like you have to get – you have to do the – the procedure stuff um but like once you do do that nothing is going to jump out and scare you the nothing is going to you know there's no time there's no surprises it's just look at this picture wander around this environment solve the mystery and get the insurance yeah. money <laughs> like that's say, can we like refer to this as like csi east india trading company or something <laughs> sure right that's csi what, that's insurance what it feels like I would play a dozen more yeah. games just like this, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it, give it, it is. Give it two more years. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my game was really inspired by Return of the Oberdin. I'm not sure if you guys have played it. Um, <laughs> but, like, I, that would be, you know, I, I think if you look at something like the Nancy Drew games that are, are still being made, I think it's really interesting that there are point-and-click murder mysteries that are still being actively made. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of not this game. This is kind of this first person exploring murder mystery thing. And I wish, hopefully there are more things out there because I would happily play more of these in a heartbeat. Um, but it would be great if that it was like sort of a revitalization of a subgenre here. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know that I've ever played a game that made me genuinely feel as much of a detective as this one did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pulling out the notebook. I had I had notes on my phone where it's like, oh yeah, this Same. guy's scimitar. Yeah, um, I had my tablet and just like anytime I'd spot something right. I think was important, I'd just like write it in um like my one note, yep. and I'd, I'd forget about it. And then fifteen hours later, I'd make a make a match, and then I'd, I'd look at my notes and be like, well crap, I made that note fifteen hours ago. <laughs> right. Could have done this a lot sooner if I would have just understood that A plus B equals this connecting dot right here. Right, like past me, almost figured it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should have one taken the... notes, and we did not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the things I did actually really enjoy is <clears throat> when you got, was it 57 people figured out? Like, once you got all, everybody figured out that you could, except for that, like, shaded part of that back page. 56, because the right, last 56. one is two and two, I yeah. think. Um, I really like the game. Very, very clearly says, all right, you're done. Get out of there. Like, th there's nothing more for you on the Oberdin. Like, get on out of there. And I, I really, really like you filling out the paperwork, <laughs> like, leading into the ending, yes. where it's very much like, this person died heroically at sea. They'll get eight pounds. This person <laughs> abdicated their duties. Uh, we're going to send a collection bill for 12 pounds. Um, mm -hmm. th this person got thrown overboard by a mysterious beast. This person escaped. You know, there's there's some... There's some really good stuff in there, and I I feel like this is probably the most controversial part about this game, but I really, really, really loved the ending. Um, I think... You're talking it, about the hidden shaded part, the prologue session. Yeah, like that, that very last chapter after you get the monkey's paw, which, number one, oh. is a really great thing to send. <laughs> <laughs> like uh -huh. just i i know that he took it from a monkey but the fact that there is a monkey's paw is really great in the context of this game um yeah did out of curiosity actually before we get too much into this did you musum did you make it all the way through to that point yeah as well? we got all 60 yeah okay just wanted to make sure i did I, too and i liked that the guy who dies first in the very last chapter was like Someone was like, oh, yeah, the captain went under deck and scared it away. And the guy's like, nah, man, like a curse like this just doesn't get lifted for nothing. Mm -hmm. And I 
I really liked the payoff of greed and hubris and folly and all of that that sort of came together all at once to kind of put the bow on this. And then there's like that small little explanation of why you can see <clears throat> that shell, like that shiny shell off in the distance a little bit during the, the modern time. day stuff. Yeah. Um, just oh, like I never even put that together. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. Yeah, the mermaid to make sure that it gets back that specifically make sure the Obra Din gets back safely. Mm -hmm. Not any of the people, not any of the crew, not any of that. Just to the make ship. sure the ship gets back safely. Mm. Yep, and the mermaid. The mermaid was there until you solved the mystery. And then left. Mm -hmm. Um I, I just and my favorite absolute favorite part of this, and I and I I feel like this is where people get so frustrated, is I like that she solves the mystery, she closes the book, and she puts it on the shelf like it's just the end of another workday. Where it's like, right, yeah. another mystery solved, another one tomorrow, let's go. And it's just like, it's. I like that it, there's there's not this big like ending, it's just like, alright, another job well done. Like, dusting off her hands, I'm like, alright, we're good, moving on. I do like the fact that you get the clue to a name and location of the survivors by getting the bad ending. Oh, really? Because if you get the bad ending, like, because you can figure out where the three people on the boat, like the two ladies, the guy, the guy with the book, mm -hmm. they're all, they all survive, but you're not sure exactly where. You can guess roughly where based on the location where they leave on the map. That's but how if I you did get, it. If you leave early, you get the bad ending, which you get, you send the book off, then you get the letter back mm -hmm. from that person right. in this location. Telling about how they don't want to talk about the Oberdin anymore. Smart. So it comes then, from Africa, and you're like, oh, yes. interesting. She literally says, she literally is like, it's Miss Emily Becker or whatever it is, one mm -hmm. of the two ladies. And it says, me and this doctor, who is the person who you sent the, guy the with the book to, and the watch. Yeah. And um, we we don't he's dead we don't want to talk about this anymore we're fine here in africa we are living landlocked now essentially the less sea for us the better wow and then you obviously once you've got the ending you can teleport back to the ship before you've left the ship and then you can fill in those dots that's really clever interesting i i just figured it out based on they got in the ship and i didn't see them again and unlike one of the other ones the kraken didn't like knock the boat over didn't flip it off. Yeah. yeah so like i'm gonna assume that they got to the largest landmass to the right of the ship say that worked all right mm -hmm. yeah i think we yeah. tried like all the land masses because we were trying the islands near them and i think africa i did too. i guess africa was obviously our last try because they gave it to us but i think it was our third right. or fourth try we did um and i actually really like that there's a bunch of fake solutions in the the list of things you can choose where it's like yes. suicide old age poison hey suicide uh, is used once thank you oh that's right yeah that <laughs> expired is the old age one thank right. you suicide it, this one's funny because i genuinely didn't find that the captain's record i'm like stepping on his skull bone like going to see his <laughs> wife and i'm just like oh excuse me see you later i didn't ex inspect that for probably like two or three hours and oh, then wow. i did that one and i was like oh 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 how did i miss this <laughs> yeah yeah That's Whoops. A little bit weird. i'll tell you the literally under my nose the one that tripped me up the most is the guy who gets like uh uh, I guess he gets spiked and then drags himself around the corner of the boat and all the way down the hall. <laughs> that one's tough. And then he gets, and then he gets beard, shot. <laughs> but he's also getting shot. And I didn't realize yeah. that was one of my last four. And That was the very last one I got. We were just going crazy. We were like, okay, Taco Hat Guy has to be the third mate or whatever he is. <laughs> <laughs> right. This other guy is 100% the... I can't remember what the last four were, but like we were, I was fairly like a, confident. One of the on top the men, Captain Steward, um, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was just anyway. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm like going back and forth in these windows. It's like, what happened? What happened? He got spiked before. Like I saw it. And then I had got the right angle where it's like that one goofy looking dude shot. And I see it go right past the spider into the wall. It's like, yeah. All right. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> the one I had a really hard time wa- with was the one guy that looks like he got crushed by a cannon, but the the Kraken actually fired the mm-hmm. cannon, which shot that guy out of the ship. And like uh-huh. that was, I think, my second to last one right before that other guy. And I was like, I don't understand. Where did this guy go? He disappeared. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I wonder if the Kraken did it. And it did. And I was like, yeah, awesome. <laughs> there is one or two people who die by being shot by a cannon in this. Yep. And it's a specific crewmate who has the Tinder who lights the two cannons, I think mm-hmm. it is. And the funny thing is the game accepts sh- shot by cannon by that crewmate or by a beast mm. yes. as the correct answer. <laughs> it accepts both of them. Yeah. Because he's the one who lit it, but he lit it because of the beast. So it does right. actually accept both of them pretty pretty smoothly. Yeah, I did the yeah, it's cannon nice by that... Kraken on that one. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's it's nice that a bunch of them there's like wiggle room because some of them are like they got speared by a beast or they got spiked by a beast. Those are kind of acceptable either way for some of them. Um, it, it's nice that there's a little bit of wiggle room for a bunch of them. Yeah. You want to know my favorite one that's a wiggle room one? Mm-hmm. The guy who's getting shot for killing the other dude who's innocent. Mm-hmm. So he's on the rope. Um, he's getting shot by firing crew. Yeah. There is one specific person in that firing crew who actually hits him. Yep. You don't find out his name till much later on. <laughs> the game accepts the captain as a cause of death. Oh wow, because that's the captain crazy! Gave the order to to fire the shots. Oh man, I love this game so much. So did you guys go uh-huh. back and get the captain did it trophy? Yes. I no, because I was on Switch. Oh, um, which is one of my favorite things ever because it's literally the captain did it is the name of the achievement slash trophy and the description is loosely true in the eyes of company and crown <laughs> and that's the one where you say that the captain killed everybody right yeah. yes a hundred percent that's great easy easiest way to do it as well you don't even need to identify people uh, you can just go through all the memories again which i did while playing mobile games mm-hmm. um so I went into the memory, let the timer run down, spiral down. Captain axed, uh, or this person, this unknown soul was axed by the captain because then I made sure I never got anything right because nobody gets axed. Ah, sure. Okay. Interesting. And I just did that for every single memory, got off the ship, and it was like, Captain did it. I was like, cool. Yeah, I've been mean to do yeah. it. I just figured it would probably take an hour or something. Yeah, yeah, it takes a little bit of time. It's perfect Marvel Strike Force time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, man. I, I So for my last note here for the game, I, I was expecting to like this, but I, I think this is easily one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's just, I, I think it does everything right. It is a game that's really made for me. Uh, every element works in concert with everything else, and it's just... Mm-hmm. If it, I feel like if the mystery wasn't interesting, if the voice acting wasn't cool, if it, if the solutions weren't a little bit loose, if you couldn't kind of have a couple of solutions, if if it was really rigid, I feel like it wouldn't be as great. But especially with us talking about all these different ways we solved all these different puzzles, I I, mm-hmm. I think this is a. We, we, Moon and I were talking about required reading here recently. You know, uh, video game required reading is essentially games you need to play if you're interested in gaming or how games are made or the history of games or something. I think Obra Dinn is absolutely required reading, hundred yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. It. Yeah. One thing we didn't talk about that we always do um, is the music, the jaunty pirate music, mm-hmm. which barely exists in the game except for a couple of overtures and undertures here and there when it's what you call it when like each chapter other has going on. yeah but i didn't i didn't miss the music like mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't have like a regret for a lack of music but also i thought that the stuff that they put in there was very well toned to the actual game as a whole yeah like i'm fine listening to the slight boat rock and the breeze while i'm trying to solve something and then when I go into a memory where chaos and anarchy is happening, listening <laughs> right. to that 
whatever jingle they've come up with to signify that specific scene. Like, I think it was really well done. Like, yeah. yeah, I full credit. I adored the music to the game. Uh, it's crazy to me that yeah. like, I mean, what was Lucas Pope at Naughty Dog? Like a level designer or a tools designer or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, like, like on the on that end. It is crazy to me that this guy is so good at sound design and doing the soundtrack and he used these like sampled strings that he played with it like so it had that Mm. like it's sometimes my brain was thinking oh this is a real string but you know it's for the most part he's just using kind of a slightly crappy string sample to play it all which i thought was right really cool especially with the game's aesthetic i thought it fit it well but yeah my wife and i just adored the music to the game it's it's mm-hmm. really good, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I to this day, it still bothers me <clears throat> that I did not give What Remains of Edith Finch my game of the year that year. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it bothers me because that is a game that has lived on in my memory so much stronger than any other game that came out that year. Yeah, like, period. Nothing from that year has compared to how much that game has lived on with me in my own head. People say, uh, you know, talking about the whole required reading thing, what games made you cry? What games made you feel emotional? What game has just absorbed you in and sucked you in and made you not want to do anything? Bioshock's twist, like all these sort of the the usuals. Yeah, but for me, it's like, what remains of Edith Finch? Like, it's one of those games that will probably forever live on in my head. I'll never forget the, like, cannery level. Yeah. Like, it's One of the best sequences in gaming, period. Yeah, it's incredible. And it feels to me like I have done myself (laughs) a disservice by not playing this last year, (laughs) where it would have immediately jumped onto my top ten list, if not being top of that list. Yeah. Uh, Thinking the same thing, like, halfway through this game, was like, man... I should have listened to Danny O'Dwyer and just fired this up when it came out and just played Vinnie it. Caravella. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. everybody whose opinion I trust in video games was saying, play Oberdin. Yeah. So, don't look at anything and go play it. Sorry. Have you guys tried describing this game to your fellow video game friends who don't pay any attention to news or critics? <sighs> no. It's so ridiculously hard. <laughs> The game, the friends I have like that are you two and the TVGP community. Right, you're already listening. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I was trying to explain it to my wife because I, I, this is a game that I think she would really like, and I'm, I'm gonna try and encourage her to pick it up on her Switch uh, at some point. Um, I told her that it's a like a really low stress murder mystery game where you just mm-hmm. sixty people. Uh, boarded the Oberdin, and uh, later on, the Oberdin came back empty, and you need to figure out what happened. Uh, and, like, at that point, that's really all I want them to know. It's just, like, you need to go play this game. It's, like, $15. I, I beat it in under seven hours. Had a blast, and I'm glad I didn't know more about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Ugh. I, I don't know. I've tried to get... It's incredible. I, I have a couple friends, like my friend Joey from the Carousel. I've been trying to get him to play it, and uh, there's a mm-hmm. guy at my work who plays games, and every time I'm like, okay, this isn't anything like anything you've played before. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, it's not a first-person shooter or like a third-person cover shooter or anything. Like I'm going to start to describe it, and you're going to think it's like something you've played before, and let me assure you it's not. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean... I, it's for me. It's like it's one of those things where it's like uh, the only other person I can think of who I might recommend this to would be M, like who I right. play Apex and things like that with. But it's like I don't know if this is in her wheelhouse because this is such a unique game. Yeah, they have to. You have to recommend it to someone that is willing to sort of try something sight unseen like do they bristle when you say like oh this movie is really great but like i don't want to tell you anything about it because i don't want to ruin it or whatever like do they sort of go like oh man i don't know like i don't don't know Uh, maybe i'll watch a trailer it's like no no um you know if they bristle at that stuff then maybe oberdin isn't the right game for them yeah i don't i feel like oberdin probably has a wider appeal than um 
than maybe we might give it credit for, but I also feel like oh, sure. talking no, I, the average I, I, I person it, it, playing it is going to be very difficult. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing is if, <clears throat> if I think if you can put hands in controllers, butts in seats, however you want to phrase it. Yep. Controllers in hands, I probably should have said rather than the other way around, because that's a bit of a weird <laughs> Butts thing. Butts in hands, yep. <laughs> if you can if you can do that with this game, I think people get it like immediately. Like yep. as soon as I started playing it, it yeah. was like I mean, Boston said on like TVGP proper, like the day he started it, he lost basically five days of like games because he just couldn't play anything other than this. Yeah, like it, like, it would think... just sat right in my brain where it's like, you know, I'm not playing it. I'm sitting there like coloring with my kid and I'm like, yeah, but like how many people shot him when he's <laughs> hanging on that you know. rope? Like I can't accuse four people. Wait, that must mean there's one. Per- oh, okay. <laughs> I was just like, mm-hmm. I'm just like chewing on it all day. It just next thing you know, there's care bears that are getting killed by Kraken and you're just like, what have I done? <laughs> right. Look away, child. <laughs> Don't look at the paper. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I think, I think there, there's something about a lot of people where if a mystery, especially a murder mystery is put in front of you, you're sort of like, yeah, but like who, who did it? Like who are all, why is this, captain shooting these people oh well i guess i mm-hmm. i guess that is the captain because they're talking to him okay cool and it's like you get that little that little like first hit right away and you're like yeah but like how do i find out the other guys oh there's another corpse okay yeah it's it's the elevator pitch conundrum yes like, you can absolutely adore something but how do you explain that to some to someone in 20 seconds or less right like this dune the d-u-n-e because everybody seems to not get my pronunciation when i say that word right <laughs> um the books um and night watch the series like how do you explain this these things to people in 10 seconds or less that's going to get them interested in it mm-hmm. it's really difficult to do yeah yeah uh all right any uh last thoughts here about uh Ober Din? Go play it spoiler alert for my game of the year this year best old game <laughs> Ober Din. yeah sort of uh ranking for this year probably will be pretty easy on the top end of the rankings <laughs> yeah well the good news is we've got number one and we've got number 12 Nailed. that's right <laughs> oh, it's super easy we just gotta fill in the middle just a yeah. bipolar set of podcasts from this month <laughs> to <the> last. <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about our next game. Uh, we have chosen, the three of us has, have chosen The Sexy Brutale, B-R-U-T-A-L-E. Came out at PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Uh, speaking of murder mysteries, might as, well, might as well just sort of keep this rolling with yet another one, but this time, time travel, potentially. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll be playing The Sexy Brutale for the next month. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. Bye, boy.